Hello friends, this is Musonela Jean Damasen, a teacher of chemistry at Gashur Girls Academy of Science and Technology. Today's session, we are talking about unit number six in a senior six class that is entitled Polymers and Polymerization. This unit is a continuation of organic chemistry that was studied in a senior five and a part of it was studied in a senior six unit number four and five. Polymers and polymerization is a part of organic chemistry that has a wide range of applications in every aspect of our daily life. This is so interesting because it concerns most of the materials that we see around us that we use in everyday life. You should get interested in it because you will experience without going very far the applications of it and this will make you very interested in it because you will discover a lot that you did not know before that chemistry is alive and is applied in our daily life. I hope that you are going to enjoy the session. Let's kick off. Learning objectives for this unity are to explain the concepts of monomers, polymers, and the concept of polymerization. Use equations and examples to distinguish between condensation and addition polymerization. To explain the terms elastomers, fibers, thermosetting, and thermoplastic polymers. Compare natural and the synthetic polymers. Assess the advantages and disadvantages of using biodegradable and non-biodegradable polymers. Relate the properties of the polymers to their uses. Appreciate the applications of polymerization in the daily life. Evaluate the effective management of used plastic wastes. As this is the introduction of the unity, I would like that we have an overview about the whole unity before tackling the specific lesson of the day. Uh, here I want that we look at the uses of the polymer but in general. One, one of the things that we have to bear in mind is that polymers are incorporated in nearly every aspect of our daily life, meaning that in every domain of our daily life we can find uh, polymers being used today in entertainment, in sports. We know that uh, the balls for basketball, for example, they are made of plastic and plastics are polymers, volleyball nets, this is nylon, uh, helmets that are used for example by these people who are racing in the cars, uh, rally for example, they use helmets, those who play ski, uh, those who play cricket, the helmets that they put on, they are made of polymers, especially uh, Kevlar polymer. We have uh, clothes in the textile industries, nylons, uh, rubber that is in plastic sandals, for example. We have uh, silk that is used in the textile industries to make um, clothes. We have wool that is shaved from the uh, sheep, just is used also in the textile industries to make uh, clothes. We, in the hobbies and toys, if you check 
most of the toys for kids or in this place where kids go for games and plays you will find that the most of the materials that are found there they are made of plastic the balloons that kids use just to enjoy themselves to have fun you know that they are made of rubber this is plastic and it's a kind of polymer household utensils so when you look around in your homes you will find that most of the materials that you have there they contain a plastic part of it or a polymer part of it because starting by the clothes that you are wearing the buckets plastic buckets the basins the water tanks the water pipes the plastic dust bins uh, the gel cans all of those the bottles that contain your body lotions the, you will find that they are plastics the covers of your computers your telephones plastic materials you will find that plastic material the mosquito nets this is nylon you will find that most of the material the sockets for electricity i will find that they are plastic this is backlight so polymers are widely used we use them in everyday life so when you go to automotives the cars the car tires the motorcycle tires and the plastic chairs we find in these big buses you will find that it's about uh, polymers so in general if you look around you will find that polymers are really used and very useful in our daily life in today's session we are going to focus on explaining the concepts of polymers monomers and the concept of polymerization without delaying let's start by looking at what is a polymer polymers by definition they are kind of macromolecules uh, to understand it more let's analyze the word itself and by analyzing it we split it into two main parts the first part is poly which is a greek word that means many another part is mers from greek also which means parts or small repeating unit when we put these two words together we come up with one word that is a polymer and uh, using the definitions that we have found for these etymological words we can see that a polymer is a large chain molecule that is made of many a repeating unit molecules which are known as monomers and these repeating unit molecules that are monomers they are attached to one another by covalent bonds which means that polymers are covalent compounds which are very large in size to clarify more about the concept of polymers i want you to imagine of uh, a string on which there are beads to make for example the bracelet all the arm laces all the necklaces in this case i want you to compare the bead to the monomer the string to the covalent bond that joins the two monomers together and then that string of beads be compared to or a polymer whereby you can have even a hundred beads or more than that in that case you will see that you have a, a string which is a covalent bond followed by a bead then a covalent bond a bead a string a bead a string a bead a string a bead a string a bead 
and this continues until you have a large chain. Polymers as described in the previous slide are very large in size. They are really very huge. Polymers typically consist of many molecules that can even be around 20 or 40,000 individual monomers. You understand how big it is. Uh, let's use an example of what you know in your daily life. Uh, so you know that a football field from one goal post to another, it is a hundred meter long. So polymers can be as long as 10 football fields. That's about 10 kilometers or 10,000 meters. So you understand that it's really very big. Uh, this chain length is the one that gives the polymer most of its characteristics or most of its properties. So since the mm, polymers are covalent compounds and sometimes they are nonpolar covalent compounds, you understand that they interact by weak van der Waals forces. And these weak van der Waals forces, their strength depends on the molecular weight. As the polymer becomes bigger in size, the intermolecular forces become also stronger, which gives it the strength that is desirable as a property of the polymer when you are looking at the aspect of using it. To be more specific about this concept of polymer, let's use an example of a very common polymer which is polyethylene. Polyethylene is one of the common polymers uh, as it is made of a very simple monomer molecule. It is a polymer of ethene molecules. In this process, the double bond between carbons opens and then join together in a covalent bond and then form a large molecule that is a polymer. So what I want you to understand, the polymer is formed when monomer molecules join to one another by covalent bonds and it can be as big as we have the number of monomer molecules. You can see that here, if we try to analyze it, this is one monomer, two, three, four, and this can continue depending on the number of monomers that are present. Here we have an activity. After learning about the concept of monomer and polymers, I would like you to give your opinion about the truth of this assertion. Polymers are macromolecules, but macromolecules are not necessarily polymers. So you make your own judgment about the truth of this statement. After that you have understood what is polymer and what is monomer, let's now try to see what is polymerization. Polymerization, it's a process. It's a chemical process in which a polymer is formed. And in a this process, many small molecules combine it together through a chemical process and then it results into a large molecule that's known as a polymer. There are two types of polymerization. One is addition polymerization, another one is condensation 
polymerization, we are going to see each of them in the details. During addition polymerization, many monomer molecules combine together to form the polymer as the only product of the reaction. Here I'm emphasizing on the fact that the polymer is formed as the only product of the process and there is no loss of any atoms, meaning that there is no byproduct that is formed alongside the polymer which is formed. This type of polymerization is a three-step process and it involves two chemical components. The first component which is very necessary is of course the monomer. The monomer should contain at least a double bond between carbon atoms. Let's take an example here. The example is vinyl chloride that combine together and they form polyvinyl chloride as the polymer. So I want you to see that vinyl chloride contains a double bond between uh, carbon atoms. And when you look at the product of this process, it's only polyvinyl chloride and there is no another product that is formed. Only one product is formed during addition polymerization and that is the polymer. That's very important to be noted. Another chemical substance that is required for addition polymerization is the catalyst or the initiator of the process. Uh, in most cases, free radical peroxides are used in low concentrations. How are these free radical peroxides obtained? The free radical peroxides are obtained when the bond between oxygen atoms in organic peroxide that we have here uh, splits homolytically and then it results into two free radicals. The resultant free radicals, they are chemical components which contain free electrons and these free electrons that are there are capable of forming covalent bond with another radical that may be present from the monomer molecule. The fact that the free radicals are very unstable it makes them very reactive, very reactive to monomer molecules. When we analyze the mechanism of addition polymerization, we found out that it passes through three main steps. The first step is initiation step. Initiation step, which is the first step, occurs when the free radicals react with the double bond of the monomer which starts the polymer chain. The double bond of the monomer splits into two radicals. It splits into two radicals and the first radical combine with the radical from the uh, peroxide to form a covalent bond between the carbon of the monomer and the oxygen of the free radical. Then the remaining electron forms a free radical at the other end of the carbon of the monomer. The second step in addition polymerization is what we call propagation step. On this process, the 
polymer chain that has been formed by initiation step attacks the double bond of the new monomer molecule and this leads to formation of two radicals at the two carbons of the new monomer molecule. The first radical joins the radical of the polymer chain. They form a covalent bond that joins the two carbons together. Another radical is formed at the opposite side of the new polymer chain that is formed. The new polymer chain that is formed contains also a radical. Uh, since it contains a radical and radicals are unstable and very reactive, they start also attacking other new monomer molecules that are present and makes the polymer chain grows bigger and bigger as long as we still have a given number of monomer molecules that are present, which means that the length of the polymer chain will depend on the number of monomer molecules that are there. It's a kind of chain reaction that needs to be stopped at some extent. Here we have to know that addition polymerization is not an endless process. In the termination step, which is step number three, it's when the reaction will stop. It stops when all the monomer molecules that were present are exhausted and then we remain with radicals. When the radicals are the only species that are remaining in the reaction medium, they happen to collide among themselves. There are two main possibilities that lead to the formation of the polymer. The first possibility, possibility number one, it's when two radicals, one of the peroxide meets with the radical of the growing chain. And this leads to the final product, which is the polymer. Or two growing radicals can meet among themselves. When they collide among themselves, I mean this one and this. When they collide among themselves, again, the reaction stops and it leads to the formation of the polymer. As we have mentioned earlier, that the polymer is a very large molecule that is very long to the extent that it can be compared to 10 kilometers, that is 10 times the length of a football pitch, uh, you understand that it cannot be written entirely on, let's say, on a whiteboard, on a chalkboard, or in a notebook. That's the reason why there is a conventional way of representing the polymer molecule. To write the polymer molecule, we write what we call the repeat unity. The repeat unity of the polymer is that part that keeps on repeating itself. When you analyze, for example, this polymer that has been formed here, you can find that there is a similar part that is repeating itself. You can see it is made of two carbons as the monomer also consists of two carbons. So the repeat unit is the one that is written in the square bracket and you put N depending on the number of the monomers that have formed it. That is about addition polymerization and the mechanism of addition polymerization.
Addition polymerization can be classified into three types depending on the type of the initiator of the reaction. We have an ionic addition polymerization. In this case, the species that has initiated the addition polymerization is a negative ion or an ion. So in this example, we have I lithium isopropyl as the initiator and we have a phenylethene or styrene as the monomer. So when lithium ion is released as a positive ion, it leaves behind a carbonion, a negative ion that is capable of attacking the double bond of the monomer molecule. And when the negative ion approaches the pi bond, the pi bond slides on the opposite side of the monomer chain. And then this leads to the formation of a little bit bigger chain with a negative ion on the right, on the right side of it. And then this negative ion that is formed is also able to attack a new monomer molecule in the same process by pushing away the pi bond and then there is a formation of a little bit bigger chain and with a negative ion on the opposite side. So this continues as a chain reaction until all the monomer molecules are finished and then it is terminated by the negative ion on the opposite side combining with the lithium ion again and then they form the polymer. Another type of addition polymerization is radical addition polymerization. The initiator in this case is a free radical. So we have already talked about it but briefly this is the radical attacks the pi bond and splits it into two radicals. The first radical combines with the radical of the peroxide that has initiated the process and then on the opposite side forms another radical. Since radicals are very reactive and unstable, they attack also another monomer molecules and the process occurs in the same way and it results into a new radical. This continues until all the monomer molecules are exhausted and then we have all of the radicals that are remaining the in the reaction mixture and then they happen to combine together in the termination state as we have seen it before. Then the last one is what we call cationic addition polymerization and this cationic addition polymerization we have the chemical species that initiates the process which is a positive ion. The positive ion is an electrophile and then it attacks the double bond or the pi bond and then takes the pair with it and combines with it. This is a hydrogen ion and then it forms a covalent bond with the monomer molecule, but it leaves a, ca a carbocation on the opposite side that is able also to attack other uh, monomer molecules by pulling uh, the pi bone and combines with it, leaving a carbocation on the opposite side. And this continues until the termination stage where or the monomer molecules have been exhausted and then the uh, initiator is capable of giving a nucleophile, this is the OH ion, to the carbocation at the terminal of the glowing chain of the polymer and then they combine together. Or the glowing chain can lose a positive ion that is a hydrogen ion and forms a double bond at the end. These are two ways that the chain or the process can be terminated. 
Here we are going to look at common addition polymers, their properties and their uses. The first one is polyethylene. Polyethylene is formed from a thin molecule where the double bond opens and then it results into polyethylene which is a saturated uh, macromolecule. It is unreactive, flexible, impermeable to, to vapors of water. Uh, it is used as uh, packing films, containers, toys for kids, house, uh, housewares. Polypropylene. Polypropylene is formed from propene molecule where the double bond again opens and then there is formation of polypropylene which is a saturated molecule that has branches of methyl groups. It is low in density among all plastics. It is used as indoor and outdoor carpeting upholstery, pipes, and bottles. It has so many other uses. These are a few that are mentioned. Another one is isobutyrene. This is when the double bond, the monomer, opens and then leads it to a saturated uh, macromolecule that has two methyl branches. It is a branched macromolecule. It is an elastoma. It is used as inner tubes for balls, for truck and bicycle tires. And it has other uses. These are a few that are mentioned. We have polyvinyl chloride that is obtained from vinyl chloride where the double bond opens and then there is a polyvinyl molecule that is formed with a chloride atom that is a side branch to the main chain. It is self-extinguishing to fire and is used uh, to make water pipes, siding, floor tires, rain cuts, shower curtains, imitation leather upholstery, garden horses, etc. Then there is polytetrafluoroethylene that is known also as Teflon and it is used when the double bond in tetrafluoroethylene are broken and then we have a saturated macromolecule which is very unreactive, non-stick, relatively high softening point, and it is used as a liner for pots and pans. It is used also for greaseless heatings, and it is used as an artificial joint and in heart valves and it is used in the plumbers tape and fabrics. It has other uses. These are a few that are mentioned. Other common addition polymers is polystyrene that is used in housing for large household appliances such as refrigerators, auto instrument and panels, clear cups, and food containers and foam caps and packing. It is also used for other purposes. These are a few that are mentioned. Uh, polyacrylonitrile or orlone, which is obtained from vinyl nitrile. It is used for carpets and knife nightwear. We have a uh, polymethyl metaacrylate, which is used for substitute 
for glass, airplane windows, contact lenses, fiber optics, and paint. We have polyvinyl acetate from vinyl acetate that is used as adhesives, paint, chewing gum, and safety glasses. So in general, this is what we have for addition polymerization and I think you have understood what are addition polymerization and what are addition polymers. Um, in general, what you can see for addition polymers, they have single bond between carbons, meaning that they are not unsaturated. They don't contain any multiple bond. This makes them very unreactive and they are resistant to many of the chemicals. So here it's the end. Let's look at some questions of evaluation. Here are a few questions that are given and they concern addition polymerization. The first one is to explain the concept of addition polymerization. The second one is uh, when you are given the structure of the polymer, uh, you are asked to suggest the structure of the monomer that has given that polymer. Uh, number three, it's now the opposite. When you are given the structure of the monomers, then you can write the correct structure of the polymer which may result from those monomers. Thank you.